Wondering how I made this sustainable, scented, seasonal, utterly foam-free table centre? Well, watch on and I'll show you. Through this video, I'm going to share with you about sustainable wedding flowers and specifically table centres. And a lot of the time, um, when you create things, there's good intent for sustainability, but then it kind of goes out the window when the reality strikes and time and pressure and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to share my top three tips for being a very sustainable um, creative practice for table centres, and that's going to be mechanics. It's going to be ingredients. And then I'm also going to um, later in the video show you exactly how I make those table centres. There's so many choices for creating your own table centres, but there's a couple of key things that I like to look at from a mechanics perspective. One, can you really look yourself in the face and say, yes, I can either reuse that or I'm comfortable and confident it's going to be completely biodegradable. And for me, uh, we haven't quite got there on a um, brilliant floral foam replacement. In all truth, I probably wouldn't use it anyway because I like to have the free movement of, yes, you've guessed it, chicken wire. Now, yes, it takes energy and resources to create chicken wire. And I use a gauge that's this size, it's about an inch. Um, I never do centimeters, sorry. Uh, and uh, I know that I am gonna reuse this. So, um, so I'm very, very confident and comfortable to use this and water. And also with water, I am happiest because my garden grown ingredients like to sit in water for their, for their lives. Uh, containers. So I source ethical containers from a number of places. I'm also looking to collaborate with a number of local potters, which I think will be very, very exciting. But in the meantime, a lot of people talk about containers and using chicken wire. They also talk about canzens or um, pin frogs. So sometimes I give my table centers and they're given then as gifts to wedding guests, which I think is a great way to share the wedding with the people that are coming there. So I don't want to put a, a frog or a kenzen down in the bottom of this container because it's gonna, it's actually gonna go <laughs> to somebody else's home. But they'll be able to reuse that when they're arranging their own flowers. Or um, I, I have stuff given back to me. It's kind of left out at the front door as well. So what you want is some chicken wire, a good pair of pliers. Don't use your um, best flat flower scissors on this because they just blunt it in no time. And you want a cutter size that forms over the top of your container but isn't so crowded that you're not going to be able to get any of your flowers in. And the way that I do it is I just then, and you have to be really careful with this, tuck in the bottom of the edges of that. And you do have to be really careful, but you gather it, it's like a sort of skirt underneath, and then you just push it in and then pull it to the edges. Now, a lot of people at this point would put plastic tape over to secure it in and all that. I don't think you need that. In fact, I know you don't. So, but what you do need is you need that top curved, so not inside, but just slightly raised from the container and then you need something in the inside to put where you're going to put your stem that it's going to catch on and eventually those stems crisscrossing are going to form a really good mechanic um, that I can look myself in the mirror and say that's pretty sustainable because I know I can reuse it and it isn't going into landfill. When you're making it, so another mechanical thing for making table centres is to use um, one of these um, uh, I think, I think uh, you know, spinning plates um, that I used to, the first time I ever saw one, I had cheese on it. Anyway, these are really great because you don't have to pick up your arrangement again and again and again and turn it round and turn it round. You can just um, sort of have it on this uh, uh, movable plate. Now, the other um, thing that is a secret tip, if you like, is a box, okay? So you might be thinking, oh my gosh, she's finally lost it. Um, what is she, she going to do with this box? But 
the advantage this box gives you is you can actually really see um, your table centre. And when I raise it up on there, um, you are looking at it at your eye level and then you can see what you're doing. And when it goes on the table, it actually flows better, it sits better on the table because you have that eye view. Now people at a wedding, I've, for this particular wedding, I've been asked to do very low table centers because they like each other and they want to talk to each other <laughs> over the table. Um, so it gives you a view and then you know that that's the height you want to build it. You can use the um, uh, table spinner to, to get it to, to go and you can have a really good view to make it. Plus you're not crouching over, so it's really great for your back as well. So um, the mechanics are solid and how you're gonna make it. So I'm now gonna um, share with you about the ingredients for this seasonal garden table center. So I'm going to talk to you about the ingredients for this sustainable wedding and obviously a key um, element of the ingredient is, is they are grown locally. Actually, they're literally grown a few steps out in my cutting garden here. <laughs> so there is no carbon footprint on that branch of sweet pea and also the ingredients um, shout seasonality. So for any sustainable wedding, my um, biggest kind of thing is to just use flowers that are actually in season and that have the a most limited carbon footprint that you can possibly manage. In terms of choosing them, so right now I've got, you know, uh, quite a few arches of sweet peas. I've grown them specifically for this wedding because the bride loves sweet peas. I've, I would have grown them anyway. Um, and included them because they are scent, they are season, and they are perfect for table centers because they have life and movement. So a lot of time you see table centers and they're really, really stiff and they're just plonked in the middle and they have bear no resemblance or connection to the bridal flowers. So one of the things that I think is really important is to include the pieces that you are putting in your bridal flowers in your table center. So the whole wedding looks cohesive and it looks like the bride belongs to the kind of tables that she, you know she's going to go around it's a huge welsh tradition um everybody at weddings has different things but if the bride and groom did not visit all your tables at the wedding ceremony anyway i digress on um cultural things so for a table center you need foliage um and Particularly, you need stems that have texture and uh, give some shape. So um, with the mechanics that I've shared with you um, on this box, oops, big scrape, um, you can see that I create my table centers on pretty much a cross. So the stems go out this way and they go out that way. And you need to identify your equivalent garden grown flowers that allow you to have stems that arc in that way. So one of the ingredients you can see from here is apple mint and at this time of year it's flowering and it has these amazing purple um, flowers and the whole kind of theme of this wedding is sort of um, pale purples and uh, whites and it's a really good um, colour because a lot of nature and wildflowers are purple um, and because there's a pale white as well this senecio this is the other ingredient the other foliage um, is a really perfect um, ingredient because it has that really white a pale leaf on the background and it's also got a very different leaf structure to um, the uh, apple mint which is much more furry and it's um, you know that classic mint shape now you can see all of these table centers they're they're not exactly the same but they are similar enough so in your own mind I would suggest that you have a plan for how you want those table centers to look. So I always put in my structural foliage first, and then I add my sort of top pieces, if you like. So um, some more ingredients that I think are really good for that base piece 
Um, and he, here is my soft um, foliage that uh, uh, is growing in the garden right now, great for spring. And um, I, I love to have it in these arrangements because, she says, looking for a scissors, when you cut it, it still retains its really good arc. And whenever you're doing table centers, obviously in mine, as you will have seen, there's chicken wire and water. You want to take off all the leaves so that's a completely clean stem. You want to cut it at an angle so that you've got the maximum amount of um, stem space to absorb it. And you always put them in at an angle you don't ever plonk it in so it's like rigid like that so um, you then get a softness and I will always put that soft stem to split up the two kind of slightly harder stems so on the Lazy Susan bit you can turn it round and you can see um, how your table centre is starting to build so I will tuck that in there and then I'll turn it round. You can also reuse a bit of your stem because I've cut two bits from that. And if I then strip the rest of it off and put it in very low down um, between those two stems, you can start to see how I'm building that table centre. Now, I also love um, little dancing flowers. And I think one of the things that often gets forgotten in um, table centres is something to dance and that gives movement. So this is perennial scabiosa, beautiful, beautiful flowers, amazing seed pods and actually those seed pods are going to be used in the buttonhole so there's this complete cohesion and connection between the table centres and the, the wedding florals. So when I am looking at a stem like that I will cut off that little flower and I will start to place it in so that it just starts to dance and what I'm trying to do is have a flow of materials um, in my arrangements so that they're still very open, they look very gardeny, they look like almost the garden has just been gathered in the centre of the table and um, I, I like to just do one layer of ingredients, then another layer of ingredients, and then another layer of ingredients. But I think if you get your basic base layer of ingredients um, sorted, then you can just keep adding. So if I look at my um, sweet pea, which I think cutting them in these big branches is really great because I'm gonna get at least two stems from that. One, if I cut it there at the point at which there's another stem. So I'll just show you that. And then you've got this other long arcing branch stem. So that, I will not strip off the tendrils or even take off, um, uh, you know, a sweet pea that's just about turning you can into a, into a pea pod because that's part of the flower, I think. It's part of the seasonality. Good cut on the bottom. Um, turn it round. Thread it in. And... Make sure it's at an angle and then you can see how the, you know, you look at your stem and you can see its movement and that is starting to build um, that table centre with all the elements. flowering, movement, texture and giving your arrangement space and then you've got room for your focal flowers which in this case are going to be roses and some uh, gladioli. So, so you've got a beautiful base of movement and scent and season and then you can have some focal flowers on it as well. So here are the table centres and they've um, had lots of water, really critical thing, keep watering garden cut flowers because they drink when they're, uh, quite a lot. And I'm adding in my focal flowers and in this case it's roses and 
this amazing gladioli that smells just um, really good. So you've got the scent of the sweet peas, the gladioli and the roses. And these will come out more, um, the weddings tomorrow. Um, obviously I will, uh, and you just have a look at your rose, see the direction it's going in and make sure that you don't have a thorniness and um, again adding it at an angle but make sure I think with focal flowers um, give this marvellous tip in some of my online classes they need to talk to each other they need to be within shouting distance so um, an advantage of the plate that spins is that you don't have to kind of lean over and potentially crush them so I want my gladioli I've got one coming out there so I think it's quite nice to have another one traveling over the other side to give um, some movement. And I really like um, the fact that these are old flowers, but I love that shape. Um, so I, I will carry on adding. And then um, those are your table centers of scent and season and you've got a little bit of magical movement you've got your focal flowers to rest your eye because I think the thing with wild garden flowers is it can be a, a little bit chaotic so you do need somewhere to rest your eye but um, I'll carry on adding and uh, let you see them when I've done that so here's the final um, scented, sustainable table centre for this um, high summer wedding. And it's got the peacock gladioli, roses, the sweet peas, the apple mint, the foliage, and um, everything. Uh, I wanted it to be cascading from the table centre to feel like people were in um, a countryside garden. So that's it for this video. See you in the next one.